everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio, and I'm sharing today with you another tag in my, I guess it's going to be a series of <laughs> tags made from stuff on my desk. As you can see on the background of that tag, it was made from some sort of a lightweight card that came from packaging, and then I tested out, I think this is what happened, I tested out my homemade modeling paste on it using a honeycomb stencil or, you know, little hexagons. And then I sprayed it with something or with something water soluble because when I went to glue this on, like you see me doing, it moved around. So I'm I'm guessing it was uh, either Heidi Swap Color Shine or uh, Glimmer Mist from Tattered Angels. And it's very shiny. So what I used to glue it on was a satin um, decoupage medium from DecoArts. The reason that I didn't pick my usual matte medium stuff is because it's matte. And when you put something matte over something shiny, it dulls it down. And I wanted to retain the shimmery stuff. And now I'm coloring my mermaid. And I'm using some white acrylic paint and a water barrel brush to make it, you know, to wet it down. And then putting that over my Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons. The reason that I'm doing that is because the crayons are water soluble, but when you mix them with some sort of a acrylic medium, it makes them more permanent. If you don't want to change the color of your water soluble medium, it would be a good idea to use something like a liquid medium, like maybe that liquid satin decoupage I just used, but I just always use acrylic paint. I don't mind that I'm blending it and making it a little bit lighter because I use that to do my highlights as well. So that's just kind of the way I like to work with my water soluble crayons. If you've been watching my videos, you've probably seen me do it lots of times. Then for the rest of the coloring, I wanted to stick with the shimmery. Um, you know, I really liked the, sh the way the tag was shimmery. So I decided to use my PBO Dyna paints. And this is the gold. And then I'm going to use the blue green and the, I think it's a green gold maybe um, as well you can see them kind of on the left there I'm gonna use those as well and just try to keep this tag super super shimmery so I'm starting out by painting her curly hair with the gold and then I'll add in some other colors to deepen it up but this is a small brush and acrylic paint there's it's not that uh, amazing <laughs> it's just painting <laughs> So, um, you can watch me paint, and you can watch the paint dry, I don't know. <laughs> I'll be doing a lot of this, so maybe you want to fast forward. But, um, why a mermaid, you guys may ask. Why, why did you decide to draw a mermaid? And the reason for that is because I'm in a, a group on Facebook that's called the Mermaid Challenge. And it's, I think it's called the Mermaid Challenge. I'll, I'll put a link below in the, you know, down there at the bottom where it says Seymour, um, to the Facebook group. It's uh, Eleni S. and Nikki Parr's group. And you're supposed to make a mermaid each month. And so far, in the two months that I've been in the group, I have posted a mermaid, which I made in the past, <laughs> but have not actually made one for the challenge, which I just, last, last month I had some family issues and got off track and so I posted one I had made previously and then the month before was the month that I made the mermaid for the um, creative arts collaboration fantasy um, event art crawl so I posted that one so this is my first mermaid I'm actually making for the group and that's why I'm making a mermaid <laughs> And I, t I tried to make her curvy. I didn't want her to be a super skinny little girl. I wanted her to be more of a goddess figure. So that's why she has um, wider hips and, uh, you know, her top is a little bit bigger, stuff like that. Now, um, this is some Deco Arts fluid acrylic. And the color is cobalt turquoise. I wanted a deeper color. So I'm going to end up putting the shimmery paints over the top of this, but I wanted to darken it up first. I really like these fluid paints. Um, they're easy to work with. You don't have to mix them with water or anything. You can just go on straight. So 
Uh, and, and these ones from DecoArts are very highly pigmented, so there's not any watered-downness about them. I enjoy them a lot. But I haven't been using them that much lately, but I need to start again, because <laughs> every time I use them, I think to myself, man, I really like these paints. So I guess I'll have to go back and start using them again. So that's her little tail. And um, she's a little bit foreshortened to make her look more curvy. I don't know if you can really notice that. But I think she's cute. I, I like her. And it was a very sketchy sketch. It, you know, I'm like kind of changing the details as I go, as I'm painting, which is a great thing to do in mixed media. You know, you you start out with something basic, but then you change it as you go. As you add layers, you just keep changing it and changing it until you get what you want. So that's what what I'm doing. Like this hair right here is kind of weird. <laughs> I'm not sure where I'm going with it. Oh, and I guess I did mean to tell you that... Excuse me, I have to clear my throat. <coughs> I'm using some more of the DecoArts fluid acrylic paint there, and that is Burnt Sienna. And then I'm also going to use Raw Sienna, which is kind of an ochre, uh, dark yellow color in a second, to kind of add the shadows and deepen up the hair a little bit. So anyway, before I said that, I don't know what I was talking about. But I'm painting. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm painting. <laughs> so if you make make it uh, through this video, there'll be uh, a special surprise at the end. But I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's a secret. <laughs> now everyone pushes their fast forward thing. I can see you guys doing it. You're pushing that fast forward thing. I do the same thing. I think just as a social engineering commentary that we've all become very impatient because we have everything at our fingers these days. You know, you got your your internet that you can look something up, you got your phone, you can if you have a fancy TV, you can look up stuff instantly. So we've all gotten less patient. I know I have. I'm I definitely can speak for myself that I have very little patience these days. And if something doesn't come quickly, I get frustrated with it. So maybe it's just me, but I think it's society in general. In another life, I think I was a sociologist. I find that very interesting how an entire society changes based on technology and different things like that interesting stuff to me maybe only to me so now I'm adding the, in uh, some more colors with my crayons and with my white and instead of coloring directly onto the project this time I'm coloring onto my palette and that palette is just a, a lid from something a lid from a storage bin thing that I had and then um, I was using it as a palette, but it kept getting crusty, so now I just put a piece of folded deli paper on there and use that as my palette. It would be really cool to have one of those palette paper things that you just peel off and throw away, but I don't have enough room in my desk. <laughs> Maybe it was a really tiny palette paper, but I'm not sure how small they come. <laughs> so my desk space is just too small to, to support that. So I use this little lid and my little piece of folded deli paper and it works just fine. This color is an ochre color and I'm starting to add in the shadows in places and I will continue to deepen those up with different colors. But I start out I start out with a a peachy tone and then I lighten that up with the white in the highlight areas and then I start to darken up the shadow areas using first an ochre tone and then a kind of like a terracotta or a sienna type tone crayon that's my most usual stuff and then I warm up the skin if it's a real pale skin I warm it up with pinks so those colors that you see up there laying out those are my making faces making skin colors that I use a lot with the neo color too so now I'm using the pinks and I'm starting to uh, warm up 
her skin because that that ochre tone makes it very sallow. So adding places where the sun might have hit her skin and gave her a little bit of a rosy glow. <laughs> rosy glow. And of course, lips are pinker, so I'm adding a little bit of pink to her lips as well. When I was drawing this, my kid came in and he's like, is that a naked mermaid? And I said, yeah. The real, you know, <laughs> the reality, if there was a mermaid, I, I don't think she would wear shells. Maybe she would. I don't know. I mean, really, is there's no way of, of knowing. But her hair is covering up, covering up the naughty bit. <laughs> So it's it's still uh, family friendly. <laughs> so then we had a discussion about whether or not mermaids would be naked. We decided they would be. Because half human, half fish, you know, fish don't wear clothes. Although sometimes they do cloak themselves. So maybe that would be considered... You know, like the ones that have camouflage spots and stuff to avoid predators. Maybe that would be light clothes. So maybe she would have camouflage spots. I don't know. It's all a fantasy anyway. <laughs> so there you saw me uh, putting in some starting of some scales on her fish half using the shimmery paints. So when you use a shimmery paint over a flat paint it stands out and so it looks more like scales so that's what I was doing it's the blue green I'm pretty sure it's blue green Dinah and then now I'm adding in uh, a darker tone to the shadow areas I kind of move over here on the on the painting then over here on the painting to let each layer dry in between unless I want to blend then I put one layer right on top of the other one to blend, but otherwise I kind of jump around. That's how I do it. So, oh, what else can I talk about? I don't know. It's early in the morning and I'm not that smart yet. Um, now I'm just, uh, I've watered down that gold with a little bit of water so that it's just mostly like a, a thin shimmer and I went over the flatter paints with that to make them more like a shimmer paint if that makes sense I don't know if it does and working some more on the skin tones it just takes a lot of layers to do skin tones even on a whimsical piece like this on a realistic piece it probably takes a thousand layers but this isn't realistic in any way so I thought I was gonna add some shading with graphite but uh, yeah I my usual soft leaded mechanical pencil that I always use for drawing I broke it so I have to get another one I, I it ran out of lead so I tried to put lead in it and then it stopped functioning it's like it won't click the lead down I don't know what's wrong with it so the pencil that I used to draw had too hard of lead for me to use it as a graphite shadow blending type situation so I put a little bit on and then I just put some water over it and wiped it right back off again because this is acrylic paint so you can wipe things off of it pretty easily and now I'm going to do uh, my usual illustrate -y lines I I tend to like to make lines around things. <laughs> I think it's an illust I'm an illustrator. I don't know. It's hard to tell. But this these are the pins that I really enjoy doing illustrations with when I'm actually trying to do an illustration. They are the pit pins from Faber Castell and they are India ink. So once that is dry, it's permanent and I can go back over with more layers which you will see me do and it won't go anywhere it won't move around or you know get all smeary because smeary is a thing I don't like smeary 
So I'm just going around and uh, filling in detail lines. I think this is the extra small. I tend to use that one quite a bit, the small and the extra small. So that's what I'm doing. You betcha. If anyone's interested, this project took me about a hour and 25 minutes to complete and I've speeded up four times. Pretty much four times. You saw me bring in some ink tense pencils there real quick to color her eyeballs and her lips and so I blended those out. Now I'm adding a little bit more shadows again. darkening things up where the sun wouldn't be. Actually, the sun wouldn't be on her at all because she's under the water. But you know what I mean. Sometimes she gets out on a rock and she sits there and gets the sun, I'm sure. <laughs> because that's how mermaids roll. I think when I'm completely done with this project, I'll probably spray it with a sealing spray just to make sure that everything stays where I put it. But I'll need a gloss spray. I don't think I have a gloss sp spray right now. I only have matte, so I'll have to get a gloss one. Or maybe I won't. Who knows? I could put some beeswax on it. That would work. So now I've got... Uh, I guess you didn't, I didn't see myself put it out, but I'm like totally addicted to this new copper paint that I got from PBO. I seem to want to use it on every single thing <laughs> that I'm doing lately. So you'll be seeing it a lot. So in came the copper paint. I added some of that to her hair and uh, made her more like a ginger. And then <laughs> I added some to the scales and then I brought in back some of the gold and I'm all adding the gold to the scales as well just to make them a little bit more dimensional and make them stand out. So, In this uh, video you can actually see that that's pretty shimmery as I'm moving it around. I think that's kind of cool. Usually you can't see shimmer. And there's my white Posca pin adding some highlights on her face and on her belly button apparently. <laughs> And now I have some self-adhesive gems that I got the other day at Tuesday morning. And they're driving me crazy. They are self-adhesive, so I should just stick them on. But then they seem to be not that sticky, so I thought I would put some glue. So I used some uh, Tombow Multi, Mono Multi Adhesive. And I just put some little dots down so that I could put them on top of that to make sure that they stuck on there. If they're they're like sticking to the paper I can't pick them up but the, and then yeah anyway they keep flipping over <laughs> it just it takes me a lot longer than it should <laughs> I probably should have got some tweezers or something maybe I don't know but I add some little sparkly gems they're supposed to look like bubbles in the water that was my idea anyways put them around different places They're sticking to my pick pick up pick me up or pick up tool or whatever it is. I'm just <laughs> driving me crazy. And then um, I'm gonna put a couple layers of cardstock on there and you won't see me doing it because I forgot to turn on the camera. So I put a copper a layer of copper metallic, really thin, and then uh, like a teal color card on the back. And then this is um, seam binding that I sprayed with Dirty Martini ink. Um, who is that? Dilutions ink. And I also made that pretty paper which I'll probably use in something else. And then this is also a piece of Sari ribbon that's a teal color and I'm having a heck of a time getting it through the hole and I'm like the hole's too small. I need to get one of those like crocodile things that has all the different size holes. My punch is too small. So I end up tearing the sari <laughs> ribbon <laughs> because it's easy to tear it. 
And so I end up just like adding it in that way and then adding some copper metallic cord. And I think she's pretty much done. If you got this far, there is a link and you can go and get the sketch from this to use for yourself. So that's my special surprise that I talked about earlier. Enjoy. Bye-bye. <laughs>